Hello guys, uh, welcome to another video. In this video I decided to show you um, why, where and why Bootcamp is failing and how can we um, manage to install Windows on a MacBook Pro or MacBook Air, whichever that you have, without you know the issues that you're getting. So in order to show you that, here I started Bootcamp Assistant. I I adjusted the Windows partition to 101 gigabytes and I chose the Windows ISO file that I downloaded 1808 October edition. So I'm going to um, run this process and I'll show you where it fails and then how can we install from that point considering that you guys are already at that step where it's failing and you don't know what to do. So let me get to that step and then I will show you how to manage and go around it. So I'll click install. Alright guys, so here we have bootcamp installation failed and an error occurred while copying the Windows installation file. So let me give the password and see what he's going to do. Okay, so I don't think he's going to do anything at this point. So the error is right here and that will be explained by this. So let's go here in Disk Utility. I have it open. So Bootcamp created a partition of Bootcamp, which I set it up, 101 gigabytes, 0.99, and is formatted an MS-DOS FAT32, which that's where we will be installing Windows. And this error happened is because on this partition, uh, Bootcamp created another partition of 8 gigabytes where he's going to copy the files needed to install Windows, meaning, let me put it here, meaning the Windows, um, the bootcamp, basically um, the ISO file he, he um, mounted right here, this is the ISO file. So if we go show in Finder to show you why it's failing, inside this folder sources, I will arrange the files by size. Here's this file that has 4.4 gigabytes. So when Bootcamp is trying to copy this file, this entire, basically this entire ISO onto that partition, on this partition, and this partition is fat, then it's giving error. And because this error right here that you see is because of copying this 4.4 gigabytes on a fat partition. And I will tell you why it's failing is because a FAT partition, FAT32 or FAT, maximum copying file is a 4 gigabytes. Actually, FAT32, let's put it here. So FAT32 maximum file size to be copied is 4 gigabytes. The, the file that Bootcamp needs to copy is 4.4. So that's the reason why it's failing. Now, in order to um, get this around, let's say you guys are at this point where you get this error and you open this utility and you see bootcamp and you see this partition, right? So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna um, close the bootcamp, press OK, quit bootcamp. All right, so bootcamp at this point is not going to do anything so if you're at this point at this uh, step where you have these two partition created and bootcamp doesn't want to do anything so basically what you want to do you can leave this one like it is this one disk 0 s3 you can uh, let's do erase and we're gonna call it win files and we're gonna format it under XFAT right here and click erase. All right, so the process is done. All right, now let's mount it. Okay, here we have it. All right, so at this point, what we want to do is we're going to open this um, partition that we just created, this one, win files. 
and we're going to also open the Windows 10 1809 October edition x64 bit ISO so just double click on it the following this image could not be opened reasons resource busy oh it's already opened here so yeah it's already here let me okay like this and let's open it again there we go all right so what we're gonna do is we're gonna select all of this and copy on our win file the partition we just created so we're gonna copy all the files now since this partition was formatted under xfat that large file that is here in this folder sources is going to copy without any um, sources here we have this 4.4 gigabytes so it copied properly because this um, partition is formatted in XFAT so if it was formatted in FAT or FAT32 it's not gonna copy it will give you an error so we have the files um, copied to this win file this is what partition we're gonna use to boot from to install Windows now we can close this and we can eject this ISO file here now the next thing we need is the Windows support files uh, where are the drivers for MacBook for Windows and in order to get those we're gonna run bootcamp again now you don't have to click continue you're just gonna go here to action and just click download Windows support file so click on that now it will ask you how to save them just put save as and we'll um, save them in, on the desktop and click save and then put your password all right so the windows support software has been saved just click quit and it was right here this is the one now open this folder here we have the files in the folder that was just downloaded and here we have the partition win files let me go again here and show you this is the Windows files partition 8 gigabytes that's formatted under XFAT open it this is where we copy the Windows ISO file now also in here we're going to copy all of these files so basically just go ahead and uh, copy or drag and drop so just select all these and drag them in here not in any of these folders but out you know in the in this partition right here you can just do like that and let them copy all right so it's done so here we have everything and the this folder contains the drivers that will have to be installed after the installation of windows will be completed so basically we have everything we need so at this point i'm going to restart the mac and i'm gonna hold the option button but meanwhile i'm going to use my camera to record all right guys so go ahead and click restart and hold the option button right away the reason why we want to hold the option button is because we want to boot from that partition where the windows files so i'm going to wait until my so this disappeared now i'm going to hold the option button until you're going to hear the chimes all right so the screen went blank here we go the chimes and i'm holding option button all right and here we have the windows partition and we're going to select windows partition either with the mouse either with the arrows left and right so i'm gonna just you can double click or click the arrow and here we have the windows and this is showing that it's loading all right so setup is starting so this means that all the ISO file and all those uh, Windows um, support files we copy on the 8 gigabytes partition is working as you can see it was formatted in XFAT which allowed us to copy everything 
and here we go this is the installation um, of Windows alright so here we have Windows set up so you're gonna choose your language to install your time and currency format and keyboard US or whatever country language you want and click next and then type in your uh, serial number if you have one if you don't have one just click I don't have a product key but I would say if you have one just type it in now that way while you install all the updates and so on will be done if not you can add it later so I'm gonna click I don't have a product key select the version of the windows you want to install if you have a product key then this might not show up for you you might because the product key usually when you buy it is for a specific uh, version of windows 10 so I'm just gonna choose windows 10 home click next and then you have to read the agreement and check this I accept the license term click next now here's the important part you will have to choose uh, this partition right here drive zero partition for boot camp so it had 101 101.99 gig gigabytes but it's showing only 95 so select this boot camp partition and click format and then just click OK once the format is done you'll see the bootcamp disappeared and it's only partition 4 so make sure this is selected as you see here and click next alright so here the restart so you can just click restart now Here we have the chimes and there you go, the windows appeared right away. So if you're familiar with installing windows then this will be easy for you, just go ahead and finish installing. For those who are not familiar with installing windows and getting this, uh, you can go ahead and watch and follow me or you can just go ahead and skip forward. select some basic things for Windows to finish up so select your region select your region where you're from United States or any other country select the yes uh, choose your keyboard layout so keyboard meaning the language you're gonna type in click yes if you wanna add another language to type in you can add layout or you can skip now since there's no drivers for the Wi-Fi card it says let's connect to a network but there is nothing but here on the left corner there is a skip for now right here so click on skip for now connect now to save time we're gonna click no because there is no drivers for the Wi-Fi who is going to use this PC just put your name or anything and click next if you want a password you can put a password or you don't have to just click next and then this is basically if you want to use Cortana so if you want accept if you don't want just click decline you can do more across devices with activity history I don't want that because I'm gonna use it only here or you can just leave them all on and click accept alright and there's a few things Windows is doing before it will show us the home screen alright so there it is okay so just click next and accept the terms here accept the terms in the license agreement and click install all right guys so bootcamp installer completed right here just click finish and it will say you must restart your system for configuration changes made by bootcamp to take effect 
So like I told you, if you see here on the left side, there is nothing with exclamation yellow sign. So that means all the drivers are installed properly and your MacBook is going to function as it should. So I'm going to close this and I'm going to click um, to restart it. You don't have to press anything, it will automatically start Windows. Alright, it's logging in. Because I didn't set up a password, but this, the screen looks really uh, dark, meaning the screen brightness probably is very low right now. Now, so we have here, if you can see on the lower right here, I have the buttons for screen brightness. So we're going to check the lowest screen brightness. So if you can see, the screen brightness is working. It shows up here, but it's not as bright as it would be when you're running Mac OS. And uh, now, so the screen brightness works, but it's too dark. And uh, let's see. Uh, right here, you can see the sign for... Um, Keyboard illumination doesn't work. I'm pressing on it right here. It says disabled or something. Yep. Okay, let's do the sound. Here we have the sign for the sound. You can see it. So the sound works. Now here on the right hand side, uh, we have Bluetooth. You can add a Bluetooth. And then we also have the bootcamp app. And let's see if it's running. So there's an error. Now this error can be fixed. You may it says you may not have privileges to change the startup disk. May make sure you're at, you have administrative privileges and try again. And then we have the Wi-Fi right here. So the Wi-Fi works. You can just select your network and you know, type in your password. And it's connected. So great. The internet works. Now you can do all the updates. You go to start, you go to settings, you go to update and security, and you can check for updates. And there's going to be a bunch of them. Um, you can change the screen brightness. Let's say change level of brightness. This is an automatic. There's a sensor in this in the LED in the screen of the MacBook that changes automatically. So in settings, you just type uh, brightness or display, and if you uncheck this, see if it's checked on um, highest brightness right here. If it's checked, it's still dark because it changes with your ambient light. And if you take it out, it will be maximum, and then you can just go until complete darkness, which is great. Click Windows, uh, logo right here on the left, and type Apple. Just type Apple and select this one right here, Apple Software Update right here, and click on it. And then it will check for new software. And usually, um, sometimes there's updates for, it says right here, Wi-Fi update for bootcamp and Apple input device update. So you want to make sure you run this um, Apple software update and you will find the updates. Now, you don't need the iCloud for Windows, but if you do, you can install it. So you're just choosing these two. They're automatically chosen. So just click install two items. And then here asking for... Privileges, just click yes. Yeah. All right, then it says to finish installing the software, you need to restart, so just click yes. So remember, every time Windows restarts, you don't have to hold the Option key, it will automatically boot into Windows again. Unless you need a, a Mac OS, then you will have to hold the Option key to choose from between Windows and Mac OS. 
when you press the illumination here it's not working right it shows that it's disabled and uh, you saw everybody is asking why well I'll tell you why when there's ambient light like if the lights in your room are bright enough the sensor that's right here next to the camera it disables automatically and the reason how I found out is look I'll just get my finger and put it over the camera you see right there so right now it's basically the same as it will be very dark in the room like nighttime so look what happens when I press the brightness of the keyboard you see how it came on and the lights are actually on of the keyboard see and then if I I can turn it off see and turn it on but if I take my finger off and then now I want to change it it will show disabled so in order to show you guys better I'm gonna turn off the light in the room alright so the lights in the room are off and look at the keyboard the the light came automatically on so now if I press this you see it will become brighter and if I press this it's completely turned off so the keyboard lightning works I turn on my light right now see the keyboard it disables right away the light so basically everything works as fine it's just because you're used to Mac OS having brightness on the keyboard even with a lot of light around you And I'm gonna wait for the bootcamp software right here. So I'm gonna click on it and click bootcamp control panel and click yes. And it's still giving us an error. So, so basically, you just need to um, keep changing your administrative privileges in order to um, be able to use that app, which doesn't really make sense, but anyway so you would go here on start menu and type uh, control panel and then go to users and click users and then uh, manage another account so see how I created another account administrator and then I logged in into this administrator uncle and then I changed the test to local account so in order for this to work, I have to log out. So log out, sign out, and then go back to test, sign in. And now that my account is not administrator, So let's wait for it. Here is the bootcamp app and then click on it. There you go. Now it's working. So the only thing here is you there's a few options for the trackpad and a few options for the keyboard. And I mean you can set them once, click OK. So you have set it one time only. Pretty much you don't need to use that app, I would say. You can go back to uh, control panel and uh, go to users and user account and then let's say this is uh, whichever is your user you just click on it and click change account type and click administrator the reason why you want to be administrator because you not uh, if you're standard you'll you will not let you install any programs any software any updates anything you're not going to be able to make any changes to windows so you want to make sure you're the administrator just click administrator and change the account type done in order for this to take effect you just have to go here to start click on the account and click sign out and just go sign in back again and that's it your privileges are changed to administrator now that you're administrator you're not going to be able to log in into the bootcamp app so when you want to log in into bootcamp app just change the from administrator to standard and you'll be able see your administrator you can't use this app so I mean that's pretty much it we're gonna go click on start and we're gonna type control panel 
So what we're going to do is we're going to go to user account right here. Let me make it brighter. Let's go to user accounts. Click on um, user accounts. and click manage another account and then here on the bottom it says add a new user PC settings and then click add someone else and then don't enter email or phone just click I don't have this person sign in information and then click here add a user without a Microsoft account type a username I'll just put uncle and you can make password or no click next here we have the uncle and then click on it and change account type and just click on this account type and select administrator and click OK alright that's it close this let's go to user accounts manage another account so here we have two accounts administrator so let's close this let's go to start power and let's do wait log out oh right here so click on the click on the the icon right here the user icon and click sign out and then just select uncle from the left and click sign in okay just click accept since this is a new uh, user let's close this now we're gonna go here to the arrow and wait for the bootcamp so here's the bootcamp let's click on it and open control panel yes and we have error again now let's go again to uh, user account Uh, it's not going to show control panel let's do large icons and let's use user account right here so control panel user account manage another account so let's do test change account type administrator for the username test the first one that we created to a standard not administrator so let's close here and let's go and log back to test login now let's go back here and wait for the bootcamp there it is so click on it click bootcamp and there you go so you saw what I did is I had to change the account types from administrator to standard and then it's working so I hope you understood what I did basically I created a second account as administrator I logged in the second account as administrator and I changed the account the first account from administrator to standard account and then I logged back in on the first account and then the bootcamp is is the uh, bootcamp control panel is working so one last thing we need to do before we finish this uh, video is we need to go back in macOS and delete this partition of 8 gigabytes where all the files are stored you know you should be deleting it so you will not be there in order to restart you're just going to click the windows logo click power and click restart and then just hold the option key before you boot uh, mac os so let's do that so click restart and boot into mac os holding the option key down all right so here we have two partition of windows and mac os now you're not going to know which one is the windows which one is the that 8 gigabytes partition where the Windows files are. So we're gonna go to Mac OS and we're gonna click enter. So here I logged in. Now um, let's go ahead and disk utility, open disk utility. And as you can see here, 
that uh, 8 gigabytes partition is not here so as soon as we restarted and booted in Mac OS it was removed automatically by the system so it's not here now if if by any chance it happens that on your you did this process and you know that partition wasn't automatically deleted then you can go ahead and click that partition so let's say I have it you know just to show you you just click the partition and go here and click partition and then you would select that smaller partition of 8 gigabytes let's say it's somewhere here and then you're just gonna click the minus sign right here and then it will be deleted and then just click apply and everything you know automatically it will be added to the Mac OS partition and the bootcamp will remain the same but if it's gone it was automatically removed just like in my case right now then you have nothing to worry there's another place you can check with this partition just if you're curious you can open the terminal and you can type disk util space list and then you can look for it right here this is the APFS container for the macOS drive 898 and here is the bootcamp partition 101.99 gigabytes and this is the EFI partition for Windows and for Mac OS so there's no 8 gigabytes partition it was deleted automatically which is good you don't have to do it so basically at this point you're done just for the purposes uh, we can go ahead and run the speed test so let's go open any speed test it doesn't matter and we can do 500 megabytes on Mac OS and click start. Oh, that's so low. 11861. Point. Let's do, I like this one. Amorphous disk. This one is um, a little bit better. So let's do 500 megabytes Mac OS and we'll just click on this one. Okay, so this one gives us 1679 read. So it's much more than here and the right is 1549 so it's much more than this age system amorphous give us uh, better <clears throat> numbers and also we can do black magic so black magic let go to settings it's one gigabyte and let's do start so we get writing and Okay, so we get write 1,158 and read 1,395. So Black Magic and Aja, they're pretty much the same. And this one, Amorphous Disk, is a little bit more higher speeds. Let's put one gigabyte just in case. Who knows? Maybe it will be different since all of this have one gigabyte. Okay, so here's the read is 1,649. So it's slightly higher than. A other these two other softwares and the write speed as well is a little bit higher I don't know the reason why maybe the way it was the program uh, programmed into maybe a different language or something but it looks like this one gives better results but anyways that's it now we can um, actually go in Windows and download a uh, crystal disk mark and we can see um, what speed will be in Windows for the same SSD on MacBook uh, Pro. Alright guys, welcome back to Windows. So really quick, let's go Microsoft Edge. Uh, let's do here Google. Let's open Google. And let's type Crystal Disk Mark. This is a software that will test the speed of the SSD in Windows. And just go ahead and click uh, right here, Crystal Disk Info, not this one. Here, this one, Crystal Disk Mark Standard Edition. And then just click Save. Okay, and then open folder, install, run this software. Just select Yes. Accept the agreement, click Next, Next, Next. Create Desktop Shortcut Next and install. Okay, and let uh, check this launch finish okay here we have it so let's do just one time 
this is the number of repetition to run and this is one gigabyte and this is the you wait oops you select the drive C and then just do the first one click on it let's see what speed is going to show us this time on Windows on Samsung 970 one terabyte Evo okay so the read is pretty much the same as in Mac OS and the write speed is 1400 so it, it's pretty very close to to the amorphous disk from Mac OS test that we did it's very close the numbers maybe under 100 megabits per second difference but it's pretty much the same so this is how we tested the speed of um, Samsung SSD 970 EVO with Windows and Mac OS. So the speeds are pretty much the same. There's no difference in the operating system. Now there's another app called, uh, let me go. So we downloaded Crystal Disk Mark. Let's go back. And there's this app right here, Crystal Disk Info Standard Edition. I'm going to click on it and we'll just wait when it's gonna uh, let us uh, download it so click save <clears throat> open folder and just run this one crystal disk info click yes accept the agreement click next 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 create desktop shortcut next install and let's launch it I'm going to close this window and I'm going to close this one. Okay, so what this does, it shows us uh, info uh, um, about um, the SSD that we have installed. And the reason why I want to run this one is because it will show you the temperature. It will show you it's good 100%. A lot of people on, with Windows are using this software to track their... The reason why I wanted to show is... Um, is this the transfer mode right here so if you go hover over with your mouse it will say current mode um supported mode right here so the ssd supports pci 3.0 x4 but unfortunately because of the motherboard it's running at pci 2.0 x4 so this means that the SSD is actually running on a lower speed because the motherboard doesn't have, you know, it's not PCI Express 3.0, which will give us the higher speed. So that's the reason why a lot of people ask, so what, you know, what's the point of buying a Samsung, which is so, you know, fast, but unfortunately, you're not getting that speed. Well, that's the problem. It's, it's the motherboard that it has a PCI lower than the actual SSD that can support so that's why you're getting lower speeds um, you can get any other SSD like uh, I got this uh, crucial P1 500 gigabytes and I'm gonna test it out and see I got this one the simple reason because you know it's not worth to pay for Samsung that, that much money to get that extra speed I mean higher speed when your motherboard doesn't support you know to run that higher speed so that's why I went with crucial it's a little bit cheaper so that's pretty much it this is a good app you can keep track of your SSD if it's in a good health status or not please like share subscribe uh, also share if you know someone of your friends who also is trying to install Windows and they can't thank you for watching